Learn about the future of the money today. NeocashRadio.com, hey, hey. Part of the genius of America, maybe the evil genius, is what I call the release valve phenomenon. Whenever a certain dissenting idea gains enough traction in American counterculture, it eventually finds itself expressed in the mainstream culture by the political establishment. Usually it takes the form of some expansion in government programs, because they'll take, for instance, the counterculture of the 60s, which had certain pro-liberty and anti-liberty things that it wanted, take that counterculture and absorb it into the federal system, but only the parts that are anti-liberty, with occasional exceptions. Right now you see the bubble blowing up again, about to burst, something I call an anger bubble. Tensions and pressures are building. It seems primarily because of scandals associated with this administration. But now it seems like we're starting to see a phenomenon of that release valve going into action. Uh, the mainstream press is starting to do its job and join the bandwagon and chorus against the Obama administration. So something is going to give. Um, it's possible that though th th this bubble won't burst, it will just do what it always does and find its release valve. I'm actually nervous about this because if it does find its release valve and the problems of today are kind of band-aided, the burst will just happen later and bigger. And the people who do the band-aiding, probably nominal liber libertarians, will get a lot of blame for whatever pain is involved in the release valve process. Here's a scenario. Uh, you, you could see the Tea Party kind of get into power in 2016 or 2014, and the federal release valve system will take that Tea Party, blow off the 80% of things they want that are pro-liberty, and just implement their 20% agenda that's anti-liberty. For instance, immigration crackdowns or some of the social conservative stuff that's in Tea Party circles. They could take Occupy Wall Street and make them happy with higher taxes on the rich, but blow off many of their concerns about openness, transparency, and corporatism. I thought this stuff wasn't really going to happen this time around because the government has been so recalcitrant. I thought we were headed for a, a situation, you know, where steel doesn't bend, it only breaks, right? We'd have a break in the steel or a bust of the balloon. But now I'm starting to suspect there's a possibility we could see a repeat of the 1979-1980 situation. We really could see the federal government make minor changes that enable it to weather the storm and continue existing for another 30, 35 years. Then maybe it would be the next bus that comes around which actually does it in. It's a possibility. I mean, back in 1979, people were thinking that the U.S. was over. It wasn't. Something to keep in mind, too, is that if you look at the 70s, that was a period of time that followed the imposition of fiat money, full-fledged fiat money, no gold standard, for the first time in U.S. history, I believe, maybe the second. But today, it's sort of like the opposite is starting to take effect. Now, it hasn't, it hasn't really taken effect yet, but it seems to be positioning to, where you have the rise of a currency that is completely inflation-resistant in the form of Bitcoin and its sisters, the world can't really move in much more of a fiat direction than where it already is. It's starting to move in the other direction. I was looking at some debt numbers from, 19, or from uh, 2011, and I didn't really fully understand what kind of debt numbers I was looking at, but I think it's debt as a percentage of GDP. The numbers now are similar to what they were uh, toward the start of the Great Depression. And I guess about twice as bad as they were uh, when things got really bad in the 70s. Maybe I should say before things, get, before things got really bad in the 70s. So the situation, while dire, is not exponentially worse than it was 
the last two times, at least when you go by that number. I didn't think that number was so soothing. You look at the calmness in the gold markets over the last two or three years, precious metal markets overall, gradual decline, the lack of new Bush-style wars. Nowadays, the wars are more you know, like Clinton wars, the ones that are being started. They're more like Reagan wars, where your, your government is aiding and abetting a rebel group, or they're just dropping bombs, but they're not actually <clears throat> starting a full-fledged unilateral-ish invasion of a foreign country with very large numbers of troops. There are just signs of a sea change and signs that the, the central government is, is kind of aware of this. What it is, it's kind of like you're about to defeat an army in battle and it starts to retreat to save itself. You almost wish that it wouldn't so that you didn't have to fight it again another day. On the other hand, there's some advantages to this. I mean, if we could have, I mean, imagine a little bit of stability over the next five or ten years. Imagine what the liberty movement could do with that extra time, what the preppers could do with that extra time. The free staters smoothly get to some of the numbers that they're looking for, entrench themselves so well that nothing will ever blast them out except three carefully placed hydrogen bombs not, not putting anything past the feds. That extra time would be great. On the other hand, I was kind of looking forward in some ways to seeing the other side of a full-fledged federal collapse, similar to the Soviet collapse. But boy, would that be dangerous time. So I just have mixed feelings about all this. Either way, though, I'm more optimistic than I was a year or two ago. Either course uh, could be a real improvement for our long haul, even if it's going to be painful over the short term. At the forefront of currency innovation, the Neocash Radio Podcast. Drop by for the latest cryptocurrency talk. Their audio format means you can stay up to bit date while you're driving. Learn about the future of the money today. Neocashradio.com. Hey, hey.